Alrighty, so there's this gaming PC that I found. Ignore the shipping and handling. I live in Canada. You don't have to worry about that. But for $529, if you don't feel like making your own PC, like I would highly recommend doing, it is not very hard, but I totally understand if you don't feel comfortable doing it. So there's this gaming PC. It comes with really good bare bones. So the case, the look of it, everything's great. It comes with a pretty new CPU. comes with a newer... Motherboard comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 3,200 speed, which is great for a Ryzen. Higher the better, and then a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which is a great starter for saving games. But you'll probably want to upgrade to a one terabyte. Uh, I would probably say hard drive, just because you can use a hybrid, use the NVMe for Windows and like your favorite game or two, and then put everything else on the hard drive so it will split up the workload from that ssd but there's one drawback with this computer and it is it does not come with a graphics card graphics card is missing it has an integrated igpu which basically means it's bare minimum gpu it's probably not going to be the best for gaming casual things like you play minecraft no problem you probably even play fortnite and probably get around 60 fps on low settings but that is not enough for a gaming pc so what i would personally do because you're limited with the power supply because if you weren't i would say the the amd rx 6600 would be a great a GPU but the power supply is not strong enough you need at least a minimum of 500 I would probably go 600 watt with that but you only have a 400 watt power supply which brings in the 1650 super uh, which you can snag for not too too bad like if there was no shipping it was cheaper for you this MSI one for hundred dollars would be great um, I have I would personally stay away from the Ventus, I just find every Ventus that I had, I've had a lot. The uh, the fans really squeal at high RPMs, which maybe you won't get it with the 1650 out of the 2060 Super and a 2070, and they both squealed. I did have this for a 1650 regular. Uh, it's actually not a bad GP whatsoever, but I, it... I would get the 1650 Super. The difference in performance is well worth it to get the Super. I wish that you guys could get it for a cheaper price, but I'll show you real quick. The price that they're asking for for a new one. That one's not bad. I had this one. It is very small. Uh, that's not a Super. I was going to say for that price for a Super would be good. I don't like $169 for a non-Super. The speeds aren't nearly as good. 1650. Like, did I not type in super? I did type in super. But yeah, like, these prices are pretty ridiculous. Like, I don't believe that. If you could get a 1660, you could get away with that with that power supply. Let's just see how much the 1660 sells for. Because those things sold like crazy. Mm -hmm. That's in working order. Pre-owned, it doesn't say for parts. That one's not bad. I had that one as well. That one was much better. I would probably get that. If you got that for around that price. That's pretty damn good. I'll go with that. You'd have a pretty, pretty badass gaming PC for not a lot of money. But everything else on this is pretty good. I don't like seeing that it only has one RAM stick, but there is a chance that maybe it comes with two. It only has two slots. So if it came with a 116, it's not hard to buy another ballistic RAM. That's not a hard company to come by, and if you absolutely have to, I would just buy two new ones and then sell that one. Uh, the other upgrade I would get is probably a better cooler for the, uh, the processor. The 5600G really doesn't go too hot, but just peace of mind, better cooler, the better you're going to keep those temps down. But yeah, honestly, for $529, as long as you're fine and comfortable with opening up. And then let me just look at what you would have to do with those, because sometimes those tabs come out easy with screws. By the looks of it, you would have to break those out. So it would be the, you would leave the top one, it would be, break off that one and break off that one slide the gpu just into that slot 
connect it over, find the power cord to plug into the GPU, which should come with one. That looks like a brand name 400 watt. So for it not to come with a PCI, at least one cable is pretty rare. Has built in Wi-Fi straight to the motherboard, has multiple slots for more hard drives. Honestly, for this price, it's actually not that bad. Like, I, I actually don't really see too much wrong with this. It would be perfectly fine to start off gaming without the graphics card with plans to get the upgrade, but I would probably just get the graphics card right away and you'll have a pretty badass gaming PC.